Let's talk about creating tar archives on Linux machines. So first of all, if you look at the tar command, it is a, well, it's an archiving utility, originally for tape archives. That's what the T stands for. It has all kinds of options and it can be a little confusing. People get very confused trying to use tar. The options go on forever. All right, so how do you use it? Well, first of all, you have something to archive. So I've got this uh, directory, archive, and it has subdirectories and other things inside of it. And I want to then compress that into a, well, an archive file. So the way I do that is I take this archive and I compress it with tar. So I do tar. And then C for create, V for verbose. You don't need the verbose, but verbose makes it so you can actually see what's happening while it's happening. F for file, and you pass the file name, which is archive.tar, and then the directory. So this will archive the directory, just that. Now, normally when you archive it, you want to compress it as well. So I add an extra Z in there, and that will do the GZ compression. So GZ, compress it. Now, if I take a look at the files here, you can see that the uncompressed archive is, well, 10K, and the compressed archive is less than 1K because there's really nothing in it. All right, so it's much, much smaller. Now, if I wanted to look at the contents, I can use the T option instead of the C for create. I use T for its test, I think, but it's more listing. So I do a tar T and V for verbose and F for file. And I tell it the archive.tar and it looks up the contents. If I try the same with the tar GZ, it lists the contents. Now, sometimes if you get older versions, you'll have trouble because it says, wait a second, I don't know what this is. And so you might need to pass in the Z flag. But if not, you don't need it. All right. So there you go. That displays the contents. What if I want to extract the archive? Well, let's go ahead and make a separate directory. So temp, I'll go into temp. And in this temp directory, I'm going to extract the tar archive. So I do tar xvf, x for extract, v for reverse, and f for file. And the file is actually in my parent directory called archive.tar. So I will extract it right here. And it creates the directory structure right there inside of this current directory that I'm in. And I can look at that again with find archive and see the contents of it. So that's good. Let's go ahead and remove that. And now it's gone. And now I'm going to extract the tar GZ version. So the tar XVF. And because it's compressed, I should put the Z option in there. Although newer versions of the tar command don't require the Z command, but it's good to good habit to get into just in case you get on an older machine that doesn't automatically do it. And I will do archive.tar.gz. I will extract it. And then you have all the files right here. So you can see that's how you extract the tar archives in gzip compressed format and the ones that are not compressed. So you can see the not compressed and the compressed formats. There you go.